for more on the relations between Japan and China. I'm joined here in the Beijing studio by Ms. Su Xiaohui and also Mr. Yang Xi. Both of them are coming from the China Institute of International Studies. Well, Ms. Su is researching about international strategies. In fact, Mr. Yang is in researching about uh, Asia and the Pacific relations. Meanwhile, joining us from Tokyo, we have Professor Yerezumi Watanabe, who is an expert in international political economy at Keio University. I want to welcome the three of you. First of all, 3,000 strong delegation coming from Japan, led by the LDP General Counsel, Mr. Nikkei. I want to ask you, Professor Watanabe, what kind of political status does Mr. Nikkei hold in the Japanese politics, particularly the LDP, the ruling party? And how is he different, politically speaking, from, let's just say, the now prime minister, Mr. Abe? Well, uh, Ms. Tianwei, uh, good evening. Uh, first, I have to uh, maybe explain a little bit about the uh, uh, LDP, uh, ruling party, uh, Liberal Democratic Party. Uh, LDP has uh, several fractions inside the party, and uh, Mr. Nikai himself is one of them. And uh, after the landslide victory uh, by Mr. Abe, now those fractions are a little bit uh, weakened, and uh, uh, you know it is not really consp conspicuous that those fractions still hold some power within the party uh, of ruling Democratic Party. Mm. So perhaps uh, Mr. Nikai wanted to show up his ability as a politician, as a leader of one fraction. Uh, he wanted to uh, uh, portray uh, his uh, political skill to uh, bring Japan and China even closer. I see. Uh, that's a way to uh, portray his power within the party. If but of course, you see, the, uh, that will be shared by most of the members of ruling party because, you see, improvement of Japan-China relations are mm -hmm. always the very high on agenda. All right. Mr. Yang here, mm -hmm. this is not the first time Mr. Nikai has brought a delegation. In fact, this is already his fifth time to bring in a huge delegation coming from uh, local governments and also from business circles. The question is, are they really representing the mainstream of LDP? If they are, what does it mean for the politics of LDP vis-a-vis -vis the political stance now the Prime Minister Abe has been holding so far? Well, uh, let me put it by, th by this way. On one hand, I don't believe uh, the delegation say 3,000 or whatever represent the mainstream of the ruling party mm. uh, ideology. Uh, exactly speaking, uh, the middle, uh, middle fraction between the right end and the left end always occupy the majorities. Mm. But the majority always swing uh, in situational uh, context. So. Uh, this delegation is designed to bring a fresh air in the total, in the general atmosphere of the mm. LDP. I would say, on the other hand, uh, the, L the mainstream or the major atmosphere of LDP is not uh, uh, quite uh, 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 positive towards uh, China, your, uh, China, Japan mm. uh, relationship. I see. Yeah. Well, Ms. Su, the question is, what about this delegation? What exactly are they going to bring? I mean, yes, we look at the number 3,000 strong. They are coming from business community. They're coming from local politics. But eventually, are they only here, make a trip, and then they go back and nothing will change in the politics? Because I want to ask you this directly. Chinese President Xi Jinping, in a ceremony welcoming this delegation, he said two things. First of all, he welcomed them. 3,000 strong, and talk about the importance of cultural exchanges between the two peoples in Japan and China. However, he also warned about distortion of mm. history, which the Chinese are very much aware mm. of in terms of uh, the Abe administration stance at, so at the moment. So how do you think the Chinese should look at this batch of uh, 3,000 uh, delegation coming to China? Well, it is true that by only by one delegation, it is unlikely mm. for China and by Japan to get back on the right track to mm. remain a good relationship. Well, it is true that in the government, Abe's government, there is some 
misunderstanding about China and there's wrong policies about China-Japan relationship. But at the same time, we need to believe that in the civilian people of Japan, most people believe that it is important to maintain a good relationship with important neighbors, including China. So this delegation provides an opportunity for for people-to-people -people exchange between right. the two countries. And people-to-people -people exchange cannot have a direct effect on the current policies of the government, but it will have some influences on the current government. If you look at the, the polls carried out by Japanese media, it is clear that a lot of people, mo mostly, uh, almost half of the people have some critics on, J on Shinzo Abe's policies, on the current policies of the government. Mm. So this makes the government to think about its policy directions and try to adjust its policies toward China. Do you believe people-to-people -people exchanges like this one will in any way influence the political wind inside Tokyo regarding its relations with China? Yes, certainly. Uh, I believe that in longer term, the people-to-people -people contact will bring uh, Japanese people, Chinese people uh, even better and also better terms and also closer. You know, even you know the difficult time we have we have been having last couple of years. For instance, students from China still coming to Japan at my university. For instance, uh, we didn't see any decrease of okay. uh, uh, Chinese student learning at the Master of Arts, the graduate level. So you see, the, that kind of thing uh, will certainly uh, cement the bilateral relations between. Japan and China for the future. In fact, there are differences between generations uh, that has been a factor in mm. terms of political views regarding the war. Older generations of the Japanese leader, especially those who experienced the war, may be more willing to confront wartime history. Take a look at this. In 1982, then Prime Minister Zenko Suzuki admitted that Japan had responsibility for inflicting serious damage in the war. In 1993, then-Chief Cabinet Secretary Yohei Kono admitted and apologized for the Japanese military's involvement in the comfort women issue. In 1995, then-Prime Minister Tomichi Moriyama apologized for the huge suffering caused by the Japanese invasion. However, in 2007, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said there was no evidence that the Japanese government had kept sex slaves. As yet, Abe still refuses to apologize for wartime history, as many of his predecessors did. So. No matter how many students are sending to each other's country, no matter how many tourists are traveling, millions even, every year, if history is not being recognized, will that really be any way that the country's relations can improve? Mr. Yang. Well, uh, from Chinese point of view, or from Asian uh, people uh, point of view, the historical issue is not a pure history issue. It's an issue relating to the existing a situation and to the future. For example, when Shinzo Abe, Prime Minister Abe, denied the post dam proclamation, that means Japan will possibly, when the uh, condition is matured, mm. will deny the arrangement based on the result of the World War II. That would be very dangerous, not only for the neighboring countries, but for uh, for Japan, for the region as a whole. So that's why uh, uh, Korean Chinese uh, insist, firmly insist on the uh, results of the uh, uh, World War II. Right. Uh, uh, well, uh, so they regard any denying of uh, history, uh, uh, Japanese aggression history, as a possible danger for the future. Mm. Here's the thing. What if the politics inside Tokyo will not change over the next few months. And the Abe administration will not be able to give a satisfying speech in which history should be rightly recognized. What is the bottom line, let's say, for countries like China or South Korea in terms of its relations with Japan? If history would not be dealt with rightly, Will other tracks of developmental relations still continue? If they do, is that going to be an encouragement for the current administration of not to recognize what should have already been part of the history textbook? 
Well, I have to say that historic issues is very important for both China and South Korea. So it is unlikely for both of these countries to accept Sindo Abe's explanation about the history, mm. about the peace for Japan. Mm. So the current leader of Japan, the prime minister, need to uh, pay uh, attention to the uh, to his, his positions concerning historic issues and try to make the other countries to believe that Japan is on the right track mm. and Japan will be a peaceful country and will be a good neighbor in Asia Pacific. And I believe that historic issue will have some impact on the on the other approaches in the bilateral relationship, like the cultural exchanges and political mutual uh, understanding. Professor Watanabe, did you hear the urgency, at least coming from our yes. two Chinese uh, panelists, about uh, how important it is to look at history? And if not, what kind of negative impact it will have on other tracks of this very important bilateral relations between China and Japan? I'll probably be between Japan and also South Korea. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you see, I, I'd like to uh, ask you not to antagonize too much uh, Mr. Abe. You know, you remember uh, Mr. Abe when he became Prime Minister of Japan for the first time in, in, in the year 2006, it was Mr. Abe who tried to improve uh, Sino-Japan relations after uh, Mr. Koizumi uh, you know, uh, put those uh, relations rather in a very difficult uh, time. What about and, now? Uh, that was. Uh, what about now, our, Professor? Our Prime Minister Abe, what about now, who uh, you know launched this either uh, the structural structural partnership based on the mutual benefit. Yeah. That's, so what about that's now, what Professor? Mr. Abe tried to bring in. Yeah. What about now? This so is, uh, his, his uh, basic attitude. His yes, his basic attitude is very clear. And about the historical issue in Bandon in April and also at the U.S. Congress, he made it very clear that he will maintain the positions already uh, displayed by his predecessors like uh, Tomichi Murayama in 1995 and also his LDP colleague Yono, uh, Yohei Kono on the comfort women issue. So the, those issues that he is going to take the same line as uh, his predecessors. So okay. things are very clear. And he wants to move on for the betterment of Japan-China relations. Well, it's easy to move on, but move on based on what kind of conditions. That's the most important thing. And I'm asking questions also about now, the year 2015, not back in the year 2006. Mr. Yang, your comments here. Well, uh, Jap uh, my Japanese uh, friend just, just now, mm. uh, just now uh, mentioned uh, two speeches in Bandung and the uh, U.S. Congress. But the key question to Chinese, to Asian people is, uh, Mr. Abe smartly avoid to use the, to accept the key words, two what are key they? words, invasion and the comfort women. And the colon uh, I'm, I'm sorry, it's three key words, invasion, colonization, and the comfort women. Three, actually, the, that's sex, a, slaves. sex slaves. So the three key words is the true core for the recognition of the history. All no right. matter how say, I will insist on the following the perfect predecessor, but the predecessor used the keywords, but he avoid to use the keyword. That is the substantial differences. Okay, one word response from you, Professor Watanabe. One sentence if you can, I go to another scholar in the Beijing studio. One sentence if you can, Professor. Well, you see, the, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you, you cannot uh, pick up word by word. You know, he is, uh, Mr. Abe's uh, uh, basic stance is very clear. You know, he wants to reconstruct Japan-China relations on the partnership, which is strategic partnership based on the mutual benefit. Okay. That's, that's a baseline. And not word on word, the words are not important? Well, I have to say that I agree with the professor in Japan that in Abe's first term, he made some contribution to China-Japan relationship. But currently, he needs to make some positive uh, contribution to the relationship now. And the historic issue is uh, an in important obstacle in China-Japan relationship. And I don't believe that only China and South Korea mm. have concerns about Japan's historic positions, but also the Western countries, including Japan's allies in the United States. All right. I'm sure the continuation about discussions of the history and how it should be recognized and how is it playing its role in the relation between China and Japan will continue. But for now, I do want to thank especially our Japanese uh, uh, colleague, uh, Professor
Professor Yurizumi Watanabe for willing to come over to our discussion and uh, lay out his uh, thoughts and views. Thank you very much, Professor. Meanwhile, we want to thank the two Chinese panelists, you. Mr. Yang Shi Yu and also Ms. Su Xiaohui, who is both coming from the Chinese Institute of International Studies here in Beijing, for being with us.